Hello, in this video we're going to look at arrays in C++. Uh, so, so far in this series of tutorials we've seen variables that look like this for example. Uh, so that's just a single value. An array is a list of values contained in one variable. And, and how this looks is like this. So let's say we want an array of ints, that means a list of int variables. We type int and then the name, let's say values here, and square brackets after that. And in the square brackets we put the number of items that we want in the array. So let's have a, an array, a list of three ints here. So here we, we've created an array of three items and each um, item in that list we call them elements. So each element in that list behaves exactly like a normal variable. And to access the elements, um, for example to access the first element and we start numbering the elements at zero. So here we've got elements 0, 1 and 2 because there are three items. We can type this value and square brackets again and we type in these square brackets the um, index, the position of the element that we want to access in the list. So because we've got 0, 1, 2 and 3 the first element is at value 0 here and I can set that to some value just like I would with any normal integer. Um, so, oh yeah, it's values, that's why I'm getting a little error here. So now we can output that just like we could with a normal variable. So let's say values and square brackets to access it again. And we type endler and let's run this program. So we get 88. So there are three values that we can access in, access in this array of three elements. Let's set all of them. So we've got 0, 1 and 2. Let's set these to different values. I'll have 1, 2, 3 and um, 7. And we can output them all here with C outs. So 1 and 2. And if we run this, then we get exactly what you might expect. So we've got, when the thing finally runs, here, here are our values that we've output. So you don't have to access them in order or anything like that. And this has literally created three integers, three different elements, which we can access wherever we need them, individually in the program, in any order, um, just by using this uh, subscript, this um, array index, we call it. Um, let's, let's take a look at what happens if I don't set one of the values. Uh, in fact, before I do that, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's just do that. So if I comment out um, this. So here I'm setting the, the value of the second element with index 1 uh, because we start numbering at 0 to 1, 2, 3. If I now run this program, uh, you see for the value, um, the element at index 1, we get just this garbage value. And that's because by default, um, the different integers in an array, or wh whatever values you have in there, it could be doubles or whatever, are not initialized, so they're not set to anything in particular. And if you output them, or you try to use them without setting them first, you just get whatever rubbish happened to be hanging around in the computer's memory. So it's important to set them first. So some other things that you can do with arrays, let's, let's create another array here, let's say, um, or we could, we could use doubles just for a change. Let's say doubles, um, I'll call this numbers, and we need the square, square brackets and we'll create an array of let's say four values here. Um, one thing you can do is you can initialize this array when you declare it. So initializing means actually setting values for your variables. Here we say we're, we're declaring an array. When you do this you're declaring a variable but you can also initialize it when you declare it and that means actually setting the values in it. So to do that we set we, we type equals and then we have a pair of curly parentheses. And if you've done any uh, mathematics you might recognize this as being very similar to set notation. And then we type the values that we want to initialize this array with in these curly brackets. So let's type 4.5, 2.3, um, 7. 
to 8.1 or whatever and now we can output these so let's just copy this so I'll use this and type numbers 0 so we'll output the 0th one and that should be 4.5 and if we run this here we get 4.5 down here just to make this output a little bit clearer let's um, let's put in some like a title so array of integers endler and I can also put an endler um, at the beginning if I want just to have some extra space there well I won't put it here because this is the start of the program but I think what I will do is let's just have like a sort of um, some equal signs just to underline this title and then let's put this down here as well so here we're de dealing with doubles now array of doubles and I'll just auto format that there with command shift F for control shift F control shift F on Windows and I'll have another endler at the start here so you can use endler anywhere where you want to have a new line character output you don't have to have it at the end here so that will just create a, a blank line and let's just run that and see how it looks and yes we've got some nice titles there now so a common thing to do is uh, is actually to iterate through an array and we can do that uh, one way of doing that is with a for loop which is quite a common thing to do so we're going to say here for int i equals naught we usually start um, a loop counter at zero uh, and we're going to loop while i is less than the number of I items in the array which is four so remember this this will loop through four values 0 1 2 and 3 and that's exactly what we need for the um, for the indices in the array because we start number it, numbering at 0 and i++ plus plus. it can be a little bit confusing uh, to beginners that um, that we start numbering at 0 um, and sometimes like so, so like the first element is at the is at position index 0 instead of index 1 this is sometimes referred to as the off by one problem. It's not really a problem. It's, it's actually quite convenient, but it can be confusing when you, when you start programming. So we've got this loop here that's looping over all the array indices. Um, so zero to three for this array of four values. And we can output now some stuff. Let's say um, val element, element at index and let's output the um, loop counter here and then some just some punctuation and then I'm going to output the actual element in the array so numbers and I endler and let's see how that looks so if I run this now we, we get this sort of nice little table and we've got all the different values here that we set here you can also set elements in the loop there's no problem as I said um, they behave like just normal variables so I could in this loop you know I could assign numbers to something um, numbers I equals 77 if I did all that that would that would set every element in the array to 77 so here I'm setting the values but here I'm overwriting them one by one before I output them so we, we can set them or get them in a loop, it's not a problem. Sometimes you want to initialize an array with zero values. So um, let's, let's take a quick look at that. So I'll type here initializing with zero values. And we'll have an array of numbers again, I think. Let's say int, uh, let's say an array of ints. So I'll say int. Um, number array and let's have um, like I don't know eight values or whatever you can have lots and lots of elements in an array you can have tens of thousands or whatever it's not a problem and to actually initialize that so that each value is set to zero at the start we can just set this equal to a pair of empty curly brackets like that and then let's copy this for loop just to output these values so I'll format that and then we're going to say um, i is going from 0 through to 7 here so we'll, we'll loop until i is 
equal to eight and then we stop looping. And that's output here, number array. And run this, so I want to save it. And now we see that we've got all zeros in this array. We've, we've set them all to zero with these empty brackets. Not really any need for space in there, although you can put one if you somehow feel moved to do that, but it's not necessary. I think that's um, all I want to tell you about the basics of arrays at the moment. Um, yeah, I, I should mention that yeah, you can have any type in an array, basically any type at all. You could create an array of strings. So array of strings, and that would look like this, let's say. So we can say string uh, texts, and let's have three of them. And actually, yeah, something else that I should mention is that if, if you initialize your array at the start, like this, so, so here I can put initializers in here, initial values in here, just like I did here. But because this is strings, now I can put stuff in quotes like that. Banana and um, orange, let's say. And if, if you initialize it, then you don't have to put a number in the bracket. So, um, if you have values in here, C++ can figure out how many values there are and it can size your array automatically for you. So um, with, with um, if you initialize it when you actually declare it, then you don't have to have the initial size of the array in, array in brackets as you do if you're not, in, not initializing it when you declare it. And you could loop through that just with a, a loop like that. Uh, it would work just the same and output them. Let's, let's actually do that, just, just because this unused variable warning that we see. Um, oh yeah, no, it wasn't an unused variable warning, it was just pointing out that I hadn't got the semicolon in there. So let's, let's just output this anyway, just for fun. So now it's going to have to go um, up to three, because I've got three elements in there. So I'm going to give you a little challenge that you can try in a minute if you want to. Um, and as far as I can think, there is one last thing that I want to mention, which is actually extremely important. So let's say initializing with strings here, format, so that, that looks good. So um, one important thing to be really hyper aware of um, is that C++ will not stop you accessing elements that don't exist. If we type, let's say, well, let's take an existing array. Um, up here, we've got int values three. So values, the values array, has three elements in it. But there's nothing stopping us doing stuff like C out values and three. So it's got three elements, and the array indices start numbering at zero. So these are the only val valid indices we can use, zero, one, and two. They number all the items in this array of three values. Three is not defined, it's not part of the array. The so-called array value, the element at index three, it's not even in the array, it's off the end of the array. And some languages like Java would stop you doing that um, so that you, uh, you don't mess your program up. But this doesn't, you see here, I've, I've output, um, where are we? Here, I think it's this one, right? So um, let's just double check. Bad idea. But C++ does not stop you doing this. But what we're doing here is, is very bad. We're just accessing some, some memory that's not been allocated in the program. It's some uh, basically a random bit of computer memory. And accessing it is just stupid. There's no possible reason here why you could possibly want to do that. Um, but writing to it is even worse. And a common source of bugs in C++ programs is that you, like you, for example, we could assign a value to values three or values 10 or whatever. Um, but that would um, screw up your program. And a terrible thing about it as well is that your program won't necessarily crash if we assign something to values three. For example, uh, the program might work most of the time, but then occasionally it might crash. And uh, 
you could even um, crash your whole computer doing that. I'm not sure if you could actually mess up your operating system. I, um, I read a long time ago that it was a theoretical possibility, but I'm not sure if that's still true with moderate modern operating systems. But in any case, what you definitely don't want to do is you definitely don't want to try to work with values that are off the end of your array. So be really, really careful about that. C++ won't stop you doing it, unlike Java, for example. Okay, so um, that's, that's a sort of brisk overview of arrays. And I'd suggest to practice this. First, try declaring some arrays and try assigning values. Try using those values and output the entire array with, an, a, loop, with, with a loop, as I have done in this tutorial. And if you want um, a little bit more practice, try to create an array that contains, let's say, the 12 times table, so 12, 24, 36, and so on. Uh, start with 0 and go up to 12 times 12. So that's going to be 13 um, different values in your array. And use a loop first to initialize the array with the 12 times table. Don't do it manually, use a loop. And then use another loop to display the whole 12 times table. See if you can do that. So that's it for this tutorial. And until next time, happy coding.